so hello everyone again uh, today I am going to show you uh, one of my top 10 favorite games I think I'm going to start a new series that I'm going to call uh, my top 10 favorite games and this one is known as uh, Polish Immortal it was played between Glucksberg and Nidolf Nidolf had a black pieces and he played a very interesting opening. After d4 he went f5, which is a Dutch defense. Uh, quite a popular opening nowadays, I would say, uh, but I don't recommend it as black. I think that it weakens this diagonal towards the king, which is um, kind of risky. And what I like to play, as I pointed out in some previous video, is the move e4, uh, which I think is very strong, because you can get a pretty rapid attack with a so-called Staunton Gambit. Very interesting opening to look into. Um, however, he didn't play that, and um, his opponent played c4, and Nidorf played knight f6, knight c3, e6, knight f3, and d5. And this is known as the Stonewall uh, Dutch defense, because after e3 and c6 you can see that there is a very interesting uh, sort of pawn structure in the center which is very hard to break however there are weak dark squares around so you can imagine that one day perhaps uh, white could take advantage of this and perhaps um, cause white some problems bishop d3 very logical move developing the bishop black does exactly the same castles castles and knight to e2 now, um, this is a common maneuver. You simply want to put the knight on f4 or on g3, possibly. Maybe you want to develop your bishop this way. Uh, multiple purposes. Knight bd7, of course, makes sense. And knight g5, which is a dubious move, and knight off immediately takes advantage of this. It is definitely over-aggressive. It seems, though, as it is good, because it attacks the e6 pawn, so, possibly Glucksberg was thinking that Nidorf is going to have to defend it with his queen or do something which he would not normally want to do. Uh, however, Nidorf found a very interesting move which is bishop takes on h2 check. Now, obviously, if you accept the sacrifice, then simply knight g5 check. After the king retreats, you take this knight. You black one upon for free and really has absolutely no problems in this position. Actually, he has a two very attack, very aggressive pieces and a possibility to bring the rook around, maybe the knight. This is very dangerous and uh, white should avoid going into this position. That is why he didn't take the bishop on h2, he simply uh, moved his king to h1, which, uh, well, pretty much makes a lot of sense. Uh, he wants to keep his knight on g5 as an attacking piece, maybe get something going. But then knight g4 came. So, okay, you're defending this pawn, but this pawn is still hanging. But um, white can actually never take it. If white decided to take the pawn, well, that would be a blunder because of queen h4. And now there will be nasty discovered attacks with a bishop. Actually, best is knight g5 simply going back and giving up the knight. If you try to hold on to the knight, for instance, well, I don't really know what you can do. Any other move is checkmate. If you play g3, for instance, and simply bishop takes on g3, and that should be made in some in, in not a big number of moves, to be honest. Like, uh, I guess, knight here, and after it gets captured, I think this is made, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, a terrible position for white. So he couldn't take the pawn. He was actually forced to play f4, get some more space for his king perhaps if it wants to run away. It also locks down this bishop and perhaps allows to, I don't know, maybe get some more protection over these two squares. So, uh, queen to e8 was played, which is a common idea in the Dutch defense. Uh, black wants to bring his queen over to h5 to attack the king or maybe even to g6 in some variations, but in this game it probably went to h5, as you will see in a, in a moment. g3, so uh, 
With this move, white is trying to get some space for his king to run away, because he knows that queen h5, which was played, is coming, and now he wants to avoid all the discovery attacks with the move king to g2. But this is not enough, and here comes the first blow of the whole position, the first point where the magic happens. Knight off played bishop to g1, an outstanding move I would say, <laughs> uh, because basically it threatens queen to h2, right? And well, it seems that the bishop is hanging. You, there are three ways of capturing the bishop, but actually two of them are very bad. If you take with a king, that's mate immediately. And if you take with a rook, that's mate in two. Check, uh, sorry, here, and checkmate. Or, of course, if, if king f1, then okay, then queen f2 is checkmate anyway. Uh, that's why white decided to take the bishop with a knight. And this is a good move, actually. Uh, well, the only move. Uh, yet, uh, it doesn't save white at all. Queen to h2 check. King is forced to go to f3. And now a fantastic move by Nidorf that allows him to continue the attack. It's e5. Now, why is e5 so strong? Well, obviously it threatens e4, right? With basically a threat of checkmate. After, of course, the bishop gives, is given up, um, not with the f-pawn, with the e-pawn. And then the game is completely over, it's checkmate. And the white needs to prevent that, so he takes the pawn, but it's simply not enough. Black sacrifices another knight with check. Of course, there is no move for the king. The king is surrounded by his own pawns. The queen cuts off this line and the knights are protected. So basically the king is in a very bad spot. So the knight has to be taken, there is no other move. And now knight takes back. So the only move now is king to f4. There is no other move in the position that is legal. Knight g6. Again, there is only one legal move in the position and it is to go back to f3. But now knight off plays another fantastic move, f4. What, why is f4 so strong? Well, it has a dual purpose, because actually, on one hand, it allows to bring the bishop over to g4, for instance, in some variations, but it's not everything. Another thing, you are threatening to take one of these two pawns with your pawn and open the attack from the rook to the king, which well, would be a devastating thing, especially that this queen is so active over here. Um, so, um, as you can see here, uh, white was really forced to take this pawn simply to block this line of fire from the rook, but it didn't help. Knight of sacrificed the bishop on g4, another magic, truly magical move here. There are only two moves. Uh, one is king e3, which is slightly better, but of course it gives up the queen and uh, allows black simply to come in, uh, take the pawn, bring another rook in, and it's going, mate is going to follow, the engine shows plus six, which is basically a devastating advantage. White decided to take the bishop, which allows for a very nice mate in two that uh, Miguel Nidor found, knight e5, giving yet another piece up, and after the pawn takes, there is a very, very entertaining checkmate with a move h5, and the king has nowhere to go, the game is over. So I have to say, when I saw this game for the first time, I was very impressed, and so I am now, after even knowing this game, I, when I realized that, uh, well, this is a very calm opening. I mean, the Stonewall Dutch is supposed to be a very stable one, with uh, no really uh, big tactics in the position. Here, of course, we have to understand that uh, white blundered uh, with this bl blundered upon on h2. This tactic was already giving black an advantage, but uh, after the move bishop g1, everything just became chaotic. And as you can see, uh, knight takes g1, that's one sacrificed piece, then another sacrificed piece. And then, after sacrificing the pawn, yet another piece is getting sacrificed. And after king takes on g4, again. 
So Knight of Sacrifice sacrificed all of his four Maya pieces in order to just deliver checkmate in such a fantastic way. Uh, this is, game is known as Polish Immortal and I think rightfully so. Uh, so yeah, this is the game number 10 on my favorite games list. It's only number 10 even though there are four big sacrifices. It's only number 10 because we have to understand that White um, made a couple of mistakes which made this game, well, a little bit less entertaining. Yet, well, I mean, not less entertaining, but maybe uh, less critical, less uh, valuable f for me to treat as one of the best games. So uh, that's number 10. Hopefully uh, soon you will see me showing you the game number 9 of my favorite games list. Thank you and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.